My name is Juliet Bruce, and I'm a new NSF postdoc at the University of California, Berkeley, and then I'm also a postdoc at the Mathematical Sciences Research Institute, also in Berkeley, California. So when I was young, I think math was something that I was pretty good at. I was, you know, in the more advanced math classes throughout my high school, um, but I never really saw myself as someone who liked or was good at math. I thought of myself maybe more as someone who liked history or um, science. Um, and I certainly was not any of these sort of superstars who were doing Olympiads or things. I kind of just followed the math classes my teachers told me to take. Um, so as in, when I went to undergrad, I thought I was going to major in physics or maybe pre-med or maybe pre-law, um, maybe political science. And I, ended, I took, got convinced to take kind of an advanced calculus class my first semester. And I turned out to absolutely love it. The, the teacher was phenomenal and inspiring and made math seem really interesting. And that convinced me that I wanted to take more math. And I think I just kind of kept taking more math classes and enjoying them and then kind of it snowballed from there. And eventually I found myself doing an REU and then another REU and then next thing you know, it was time to graduate and someone told said, if you like doing math, you can keep doing it, just go to grad school, you should apply. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, so I think in some ways it was really that first semester of undergrad that hooked me into mathematics. And from there, it was just sl a slow descent into becoming a mathematician. Um, so I tend to span a number of different fields in mathematics. Um, I'd say my home is really in fi a field called commutative algebra and algebraic geometry. Um, and the idea behind these fields broadly is to use algebraic techniques um, to study the geometry of the solution set to systems of polynomial equations. So in high school, um, we'd learn kind of how to study things like parabolas and lines, both by manipulating equations like ax squared plus bx plus c in the quadratic formula, but also by graphing things in the plane and getting things like parabolas or lines. Um, and algebraic geometry is really kind of a souped up version of trying to use this connection between kind of geometry and algebra to really kind of see some deep insights. Although in general, I really love kind of engaging with math across from other fields and finding interesting and new connections. I think it's kind of one of the beautiful and amazing parts of mathematics is how interconnected things are and how things that don't at all seem related on the surface can sometimes lead to very beautiful and interesting applications. So I think as a queer woman in math and kind of society more generally, there were a number of challenges and struggles that I've luckily been able to get through with the support and um, help of many friends and colleagues and mentors. Um, but two, that, two struggles that really come to mind is things that have shaped both me personally and how I view mathematics, I think, um, are, well, one, so I said I took this advanced calculus class my first semester of undergrad, and I was completely overmatched. Um, it was all really abstract and proof-based, and I'd never really kind of seen proofs before, and here, certainly not at this level, and there were people in this class who, you know, had gotten medals at IMOs, and here I was never, never seen a proof. And, but I struggled, and I went to office hours, and I worked with friends, and I really put the work in, and I was scraping by until the first exam came. And that first exam, just kind of destroyed me. I got something like a 50 out of 100, like lowest grade in the class by, you know, an order of magnitude or something probably. And on the exam, it said, see me kind of in big letters on the back. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this is it. You know, I'm not going to be a math major. I'm dropping this class. I, I can't fail a class my first semester of college. That's horrible. I'm going to do pre-med. I'm going to do pre-law. I'll do something like that. Um, but I went, to my professor's office hours and she kind of sat me down and said, you know, I've seen your homeworks, I've seen your questions in class. I think you understand this material a lot better than this exam shows. I don't think this exam reflects who you are as a mathematician. And, you know, she really helped walk me through for the next hour or two, kind of going page by page, problem by problem, kind of like, what were you thinking? How were you thinking about this? And really showed me that I understood the material a lot better than I showed on the exam and kind of helped me realize that how I was approaching this and how you have to approach a kind of theoretical math in some sense is really different from how you might first learn math in high school and how 
I needed to kind of grow and learn how to do these things a new way. Um, and it was really inspiring. And I think this person, Karen Smith, really is the reason I stuck with it. Her kind of encouragement and support um, made I meant I didn't drop the class. And you know, with her support, I got through the class and ended up getting a pretty good grade. And I kept taking more math classes in undergrad. And she encouraged me to go to grad school. And here I am still in mathematics, despite having completely failed my first college math exam. Um, and the second kind of challenging moment that comes to mind was that um, early on in grad school, kind of in the thick of it, right as I was trying to start a research project and finish my exams, um, I came out as queer to, you know, the world and myself, my family, everyone in the department, the mathematical community more generally. And that was something that took a lot of effort, both on my own part for internal introspection and personal thought, but also kind of learning how to navigate a world that is not always quite friendly to queer people, um, especially mathematics, which can sometimes be pretty heteronormative. Um, but I got through it. And I think really that's a testament to the amazing communities that I found in mathematics. Um, they weren't necessarily evident when I first started coming out, but it really, there was amazing support networks of women and queer people and LGBTQ people more generally in mathematics um, who can help you see yourself in this subject and really help you find your way forward into a career in mathematics. And I think this has really shaped my view that mathematics is for everyone and everyone can be good at mathematics and everyone should be welcomed into the mathematical community. So I've been lucky enough to help organize and host a number of different conferences in math, um, including one aimed at um, as a, aimed as graduate students in commutative algebra for women and people of generally underrepresented um, genders. And I think kind of one of my proudest accomplishments is just or helping to organize and put this on and see the change that it was able to bring about in a community and the community it was helped able to form. I think I'm lucky enough to have gotten to benefit from kind of some great communities and some great mentoring and some great support throughout my career. Um, and I think it feels really good and felt really important to me to be able to give back and try to create the same sort of space and community for others in my field. And I think kind of hearing from people after that conference that that, that, that time and space was really important and meaningful to them um, is something that I think I look back, very fond, back on very fondly. So I think I've had a ton of different mentors and people who have supported throughout my, me throughout my career. I definitely would not be here or probably even in mathematics um, without the help and care and support of a ton of different people. Um, there are way too many to mention kind of by name. So if I leave you out and you please apologize, um, but a few that come to mind definitely. So one I've already mentioned, Karen Smith, who is kind of my undergrad mentor, the person who um, really helped me get through that first calculus class and continue to encourage me and eventually kind of brought me to my current field of algebraic geometry and kind of taught me my first class in that um, is someone who comes to mind. Um, another person is my advisor in grad school, Daniel Ehrman, who really kind of helped show me how to be a mathematician kind of professionally as a job and kind of how to do that, do so caringly and thoughtfully. Um, but I think kind of a kind of more amorphous group of people who I think have been really helpful in my career is kind of all of the women and queer people who kind of were right above me kind of you know, a few years in grad school and like now we're kind of just starting their tenure track positions who kind of really welcomed me to the community, really welcomed me to commutative algebra and algebraic geometry, um, made me feel like I had a home in mathematics and really kind of showed me how to succeed and showed me that people can succeed and do amazing things in mathematics um, as women, as LGBTQ people, um, which is not something you always see. So I think I'd really want to thank all of those kind of role models who just kind of were being their amazing selves and welcomed me to the field. So I think kind of the words of wisdom that come to my mind is keep is to remember that math is for everyone, that you belong to the mathematical community. If you want to be a mathematician, if you want to do mathematics, you can do mathematics and you can be part of this community and you can make a difference. Um, this doesn't mean 
everything is always going to be easy. Um, there's going to be struggles along the way. And in the moment, those struggles might find be difficult and hard and hurt. Um, but you can find communities and support and people and mentors to help you through those hard moments um, and to help you achieve your dreams of being a mathematician. And kind of, I think, in the end, those struggles, while never fun, um, are things that can help you shape how you view mathematics and might help shape, may help, might help you shape mathematics in a way that's better for the future. So I'd encourage you to just remember that mathematics is for you if you want it to be so.